Example, if a player has a season ending injury, the minimum game requirement will drop from 65 to 62 games. Also, any Wait, game what? where a player. If they have a season ending injury, it drops to 62? That doesn't make sense. So if you have a season ending injury, you get three more games to uh, get a pass. That doesn't even make sense because your, your season ended. So how does that make sense? What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Caleb. We'll be back with another video. Today, we got a massive change is coming to the NBA by Jimmy Hyrule. Let's get to it. On April 1st of this year, the NBA and its players agreed to a new collective bargaining agreement. The announcement of this new CBA broke news for about a day or two, and then it was shrugged off Wait, in the midst of the. Should I read that? Hold on, let me go back. The NBA. It's too much. The announcement of this new CBA it, broke news it. for about a day or two, and then it was shrugged off in the midst of the regular season. For the most part, it's a bunch of contract jargon, new financial structuring and incentives, nuanced up. agreements between owners and players that us fans couldn't care less about. But built mm -hmm. into the details of this fairly routine league adjustment are three major rule changes to how the NBA will operate. New season three tournament? adjustments Need to that. rules, systems, awards, and honors that have been in place for decades and will change the way the NBA and its players navigate the season. Okay. Coming into effect starting with the 2023-2024 NBA season, the league has a new CBA. Among the slosh of financial mumbo jumbo that I couldn't give a rat's ass about, there are three major changes taking place from this season forward. The first one okay. is a new rule regarding the minimum number of games a player must play to receive 65, individual know that. awards and or be eligible for all NBA I heard teams. That not election. too long ago. Previously, this threshold was 58 games, or about 70% of the season. But under the new CBA rules, a player now must play at least 65 games in a season to qualify. So that means off the rip, John. John Morant would not be able to be an all NBA. Um, he won't be MVP or none of that. He can't get none of that because he got a 25 game suspension. And also, um, players like Kawhi, that load managing AD, it's gonna stop y'all from uh, getting y'all awards. So y'all better get y'all bus on the court honors. this year. The overarching goal of this change being Who to reduce be injury the prone? Of load Zion, he don't league. play games. And surely he could have been all NBA by, just by now. Over the last three seasons, of the 45 players who were selected to an all- Oh my goodness, look at the snubs. Look at the snubs last year. Oh my goodness. Look at the snubs. Let me chill out. All NBA team. 15 of them wouldn't have even qualified under the new rules. In fact, LeBron James would have missed the cut in all of the last three seasons. Dang. And 15 superstars not playing enough games over the course of three seasons may not sound like much until you realize that in the previous 19 seasons combined, only 15 players made all NBA teams without playing at least 70% of the season. A requirement mm. that pushes for about 10% more games played throughout a season for every superstar around the league may I like have that a rule, impact though. on the game than you it's would basketball, think. basketball, bro. Which leads you can't play and don't play. Yahoo Sports to beg the question, is it worth squeezing a handful more games from these stars to risk rewarding less prestigious candidates? No. Yes. Wait, absolutely. Yes, it is. And this I, minimum I mean, yes, game requirement will also be in effect for individual awards, such as the MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, Rookie of the Year, and so on. The minimum game requirement here will have less of an effect on the league since voters are already in a silent agreement that in order to be the best at anything, you have to play yeah, most I think games. When the MVP next year. This is year. the exact reason why, excluding shortened seasons, there's only been two MVP recipients that played less than 70 games since the league moved to the 82 game schedule in 1968. Bill Walton in 1978 and Joel Embiid just this past season. But mm. still, we will inevitably see this new rule begin to change the way stars around the league navigate each season. Over the past decade, here are award winners that, under the new rules, wouldn't have even been eligible, including Jaron Jackson Jr. for Defensive Player of the Year in 2023. Now, the one caveat to this rule change is that there will be exceptions. I mean... If you ask me, these, like, like off of my memory, I'm not going to say, like, this is facts, but off of my memory, this is who actually should have won the awards this year. I mean, these years, because, like, obviously, Draymond, 2015, he was still the, one of the top defenders, like, period. So, AD, 
Um, if Rudy only played 56 games and AD played more than 56, you know he was the better defender because I feel like, personally, AD is already a better defender like in about, in about every area. Uh, rookie of the Year Award. I feel like Ant should have got it anyway because he was a starter that entire series, season. Yeah, LaMelo was like in and out because he was being inconsistent, if I'm not tripping. John Morant winning the Most Improved Player Award. That was the biggest snub to DeJounte Murray ever I ever seen because Ja was already good the previous year. He was literally going, he had like 45 in the playoffs the previous year, bro. Come on now. And then Jared Jackson Jr., he came in the season, he started the season late, but he did play 63 games. 63, not bad, but you no. Know. Brooke Lopez was dominating the entire se season. And what, the Bucks finished number one? Like, come on now. Under specific circumstances. It's common sense. For example, if a player has a season ending injury, the minimum game requirement will drop from 65 to 62 games. Also, any Wait, game what? where a player requirement will drop from 65. If they have a season ending injury, it drops to 62? That doesn't make sense. So if you have a season ending injury, you get three less games, you get three more games to uh, get a pass. That doesn't even make sense because your, your season ended. So Absolutely. how does that make sense? I also, any game where a player plays at least 20 minutes will count as a game played. Okay. And I think we can all see exactly how this exception will be exploited. And to demonstrate this, I want to point y'all to AC Green. Throughout the 80s and 90s, Ooh. Green was a solid contributor in the NBA, but his legacy is remembered for his untouchable record for consecutive games played in an NBA career. From 1986 to 2001, to fight right there. AC Green did not miss a single basketball game. Not one. 1,192 consecutive games over the course of 16 years. A record that I'd be willing to bet anything. What? Course of 16 years. 192 consecutive games over the course of 16 years. 1,192 games I'd be consecutive. Willing to bet anything, we'll he had to average like five points, bro. But what people fail to mention is that in order to set this record, AC Green had numerous games where he would simply check into the game for a few possessions and then check back out. Bro, he averaged nine minutes. Come on the now, that record well don't mean nothing. Streak, and he would do anything in his power to keep it going until the day he retired. It's not a matter of if his goal around the league entering the NBA was to be the most consecutive game, check back game out after 21 ever. minutes. It's a matter of how many stars will do this and how often. But this rule change is certainly a step in the right direction. Now, the next rule change that was included in the new CBA is one that fans have been asking for for years. The NBA has become a positionless league. Is Steph Curry a point what guard mean, or bro? is he really a shooting guard? Probably a little bit of both. Is Jimmy I mean, Butler like, a power forward? Of course not. And yet he's listed as one. If you look up the words shooting guard in the dictionary, you'll find a picture of Klay Thompson. And yet he's listed as a small forward. Positions don't matter. And the NBA mm. is finally taking notice of this starting next season and the way girl. that they vote for I'm all NBA sure, teams. Because from this upcoming season forward, all NBA teams will no longer be restricted. They got rid of positionless all NBA teams? Well, so that means you got to just be the top five in the league that year. Did to two guards, now that's two big. forwards, and a center. Instead, that's all big. NBA teams will be positionless. The five players who receive the most first place votes will simply be first team all NBA. That's players big. who earn the sixth through 10th most votes will be second team all NBA, and 11th through 15th will be named third team all NBA. This change in the structure of how all NBA teams are chosen will fundamentally change the contractual leverage of players around the league and the legacy Gotta be they hoping leave there. behind. This past season, Nikola Jokic, the best player in the world, didn't Should've even won make first-team All-NBA. Only one center is allowed to make first-team, and that spot went to Joel Embiid. Rudy Gobert has four All-NBA selections in his career. You want to know how many All-NBA teams Vince Carter oh, made in his 22-year career? 2021. Two. I what? Know, right? Guess how many All-NBA teams Ray Allen has made in his career? Probably one. Two. Oh. What about okay. Dennis Rodman? Three. You guessed it. Two. Oh. In fact, 
Rudy Gobert has more career All-NBA selections than Vince Carter, Ray Allen, Dennis Rodman, DeMarcus Cousins, Manu Ginobili, Draymond Green, Kevin Love, Alonzo Mourning, Klay Thompson, Bill Walton, James Worthy, Devin Booker, Chris Bosh, Kevin McHale, Earl Monroe, Derek Rose, more than Devin Booker, more than Devin Booker, more than Draymond. Well, I, I don't know, because he could score at least. He can, like, score. Like, Draymond dropped his scoring off. More than Clay is crazy. More than Devin Booker is crazy. So I like this in the rule dish. Appalling. The old All NBA voting system was broken, and it had been for years. But the most I say egregious it's broken, case of this failed it's not voting bad system that it was came back in 2016 when like, DeAndre this Jordan, is probably better. who was never at any point in his career even considered a top 30 player in the league, made first team All NBA. What? That's right. Because of this voting system, DeAndre Jordan was virtually named a top five player in the NBA. That's crazy. That same season, Kevin Durant, at his apex, did not make first team All NBA. That's Change crazy. was in need, and to demonstrate, just he had not, KD had. Wait, I'm trying to see how it go. He had more total points than than DeAndre Jordan too. That's crazy. Just how much these alterations over will affect the NBA. Here are the All NBA teams from 2023. Now, considering the new minimum game requirements and the positionless voting, this is how the 2023 All-NBA teams would look under the new rules according to voting results. Giannis, Steph, Butler, Lillard, and LeBron all missed too many games to make the cut. Jokic mm. makes first team with Embiid. But they had injuries though, so like, did, Sabonis, did he add Fox, the, uh, and Randall all get promoted to second team, and four players in Martin, Holiday, Brunson, and Anthony Edwards all make their first All-NBA team. Now, the last major change that we'll see in this upcoming season is Juice the new in-season tournament. No official structure of the tournament has been announced yet, but the basic framework is set. And it'll look something like this. The league will be divided into six pools of five teams. Pools will be compromised of teams from the same conference. And that's okay. about the extent of this plan making any sense. Because out of the established pools of teams, there will be designated days during the first six weeks of the season where teams will play within their pool. The winner the of heck? each six pools will advance to a single elimination stage along with two wildcard teams. The league has yet to announce how these wildcard teams will be determined, so maybe record? The semifinals and finals will be played at a neutral site, and the players on the winning tournament team will receive $500,000 each. But here's where oh, it gets wow. really weird. Each NBA team will only be scheduled for 80 games on the season. Teams that do not advance to the knockout round of the tournament will have two games added to their schedule, and the teams that make the final round of the tournament will play 83 oh, wait. added to their So it's only 80 games now? That do not advance to the knockout round will only be scheduled each. But here's it's only where 80 it gets games now in the really season? weird. Each NBA team will only be scheduled for 80 games on the season. Oh, teams that just do not NBA advance to the knockout round of the tournament in. will have two games added to their schedule, and the teams that make the final round of the tournament will play 83 total games. So let me get this straight. This new in-season tournament will affect the scheduling of the regular season. It will have qualifying rounds built throughout the season. It will lead to some teams playing more games in a season than others, but most importantly, I don't Can't know if anyone's even going to care. The teams that are already good might not care about the in-season tournament because they have bigger goals. And the teams that have no chance at contending for a championship and might care to win the tournament probably won't have a shot. I think the single elimination format mm. could work in favor of less capable teams, but are the title contenders for the postseason not also the same teams that will be favored to win the in-season tournament? Will the rich not just get richer while bad teams continue to have no shot at winning anything? Mm. Over the last decade, the NBA has added a handful of new awards yeah, it that players really can sense. win it sounds just like a fan The theme. Hustle Award, Teammate of the Year Award, Clutch Player of the Year, Eastern and Western Conference MVPs. These extra awards get more players and fan bases involved. But if we're being completely honest, no one no really one cares. cares about these additive accolades. Who won the Hustle Award in 2020? who won the Teammate of the Year award in 2021. I don't know. Similar to these secondary awards, I think the midseason tournament could be a fun detour from the regular season, but I'm not sure how much value or even importance it will hold, especially considering it will uproot the entire structure of the regular season. But what do y'all think? Do you like the changes coming to the NBA? If you had the power, what changes would you make? 
if the five mm. best players in the league are five point guards, does it make sense to have them all first team all NBA? What if the 10 mm. best players in the league all play less than 65 games? Would it really make sense to have the 11th most valuable player in the NBA win the MVP? Mm. How does Rudy freaking Gobert have more all NBA selections than Vince Carter? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, Dang. until next time. So he really contradicted him. He kind of contradicted himself at the end of the video. But like, it wasn't like he was trying to. He was like saying like, well, no, he says that the rules contradict themselves. So I don't know. The midseason tournament, that sounds more like a fan thing. I'll, I'll have to see like how they really plan on doing that before I say it makes sense or it doesn't make sense. But I definitely say that the NBA players probably wouldn't like it. You've seen Jamal Murray tweet. Um, what changes would I make to the NBA? Stop the flopping. Um, free throw baiting. Um, that's that's all I really care for. Change the refs. Yeah, change the refs. But hey, that'll be video though. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you want to see next. You're a genius, McFly. <laughs>